Kia ora, good evening. The future of TY aluminium smelter remains in doubt after Meridian Energy today announced talks have broken down and a new electricity supply agreement was unlikely, although Pacific Aluminium remains hopeful a commercial agreement can be reached. The stalemate follows denied requests for government to step in and broker a deal between the power giant and NZAS. The smelter is now locked into the first year of an 18-year power contract that was negotiated in 2007 with TY consuming around one-seventh of New Zealand's power. If it were to close, government's mighty river asset sale could be at risk as the electricity market would be flooded with excess power for some time. A fall in aluminium prices due to the global financial crisis coupled with high spot electricity prices have shaken the viability of the smelter. Rio Tinto is seeking to sell TY along with a clutch of smaller smelters in Australasia. A serious crash involving three vehicles occurred in South Invercargill this afternoon. The area was quickly cordoned off on the corner of Morton and Centre Streets as police, ambulance and fire appliances attended the scene of the collisions. Staff from two fire appliances assisted ambulance staff in removing two injured elderly people from one vehicle. Police have confirmed a number of people were involved in the accident. Investigations are continuing as police piece together what caused the crash. Meanwhile, drivers are being urged to take extra care over the holiday weekend and police say they'll be out in force. The roads around Southland and Central Otago are expected to be very busy over the holiday period. Southland Road Policing Manager Senior Sergeant John Pine says police will be monitoring traffic flows, targeting speed, alcohol and poor driver practices. The official holiday period started at 4pm today and ends at 6am on Wednesday, allowing for observance of South and Anniversary Day. Police will issue infringements to drivers travelling more than 4 kilometres over the speed limit. We did have a good year last year, although within Southern District we had three serious injuries from crashes and about six throughout Otago Southland of minor injuries. That is comparatively good, but we'd really like that even to improve still. Yes, we may not seeing, be seeing the death rates, but people still are being hurt and lives are being changed in these accidents, aren't they? Yes, they are. We're getting better and there's a lot of factors there. Uh, road education, uh, the way people are driving, engineering, modern cars, that sort of thing as well. But we've still got a way to go and a lot of it comes down to driver attitude and fatigue is affected too, particularly people will be wanting to get away uh, for, for longer destinations further afield. What sort of resources will the Southern District Policing be putting into this weekend? Um, obviously more than, than a normal weekend? Yes, yes, that's right. We'll be concentrating our road policing resources. We have highway patrol on the roads, our main arteries in and out south and Highway 1, Highway 6. We've got strategic traffic units that will also be on the main arteries and some of the secondary roads and we can expect to see our alcohol enforcement teams out and about as well. Alcohol is a major factor, isn't it? People, we still need to educate people. It still is. Uh, getting better over the years, but we've still got some way to go with that too, and particularly our young drivers getting that zero, uh, zero means zero, don't drink before you get behind the wheel. So 104, or has the figure been bandied around, no tolerance, in, I mean in any speed limit I guess by four, is that allowing for speedometer error and that sort of thing? It does allow for speedometer error, but what I would like to put forward is just drive to, providing the road conditions are fine, drive to the limits that are set, they're there for a purpose. So don't look at 104, don't set it for 106. You may well get uh, stopped by us or at least registered as you go through a speed camera, set your cruise control for 100, providing the conditions are fine, you can't go wrong. You're not making up much time by doing 104, 105 anyway. What role can the public pay, play? They can um, dial up offenders? Yes they can, yes. Uh, star 555 on the mobile phone, we do ask you to stop first on the side of the road, but if you've got a registration number, you'll talk to our communication centre, we broadcast that information, any free cars can go uh, and respond to that. If we don't find them on the information that is provided, we can follow that up retrospectively. So I'd encourage everybody out there to drive as if somebody has a cell phone, only too keen to dob you in. Environment South and ratepayers look set to be the least affected by rates increases in the region, with the Regional Council proposing an increase of 1.16%. Environment South and councillors voted yesterday to adopt the draft annual plan and budget for 2013-14. to Ongoing activities include processing resource consents within timeframes, monitoring and enforcing consents, best practice advice for farmers and local river management. Also outlined in the plan, support for self-help possum control program and contributing to the eradication of bovine TB from cattle and deer herds. The draft annual plan and budget will be released shortly for public consultation with submissions closing on the 3rd of May. 
After returning around $100 million to the local economy, the southern crayfish industry is about to wind down for the season. With 36% of New Zealand's crayfish production coming from Southland waters, the season's being heralded a success by quota holders and processors. At its peak, crayfish were fetching up to $90 per kilogram, but averaged around $72 per kilogram dollars per kilogram over the season, which saw over 960 tonnes of lobster caught in Southland. The local lobster market is being conservative, conservatively managed to ensure the premium product is available for Chinese consumers as required, and research is ongoing into retaining lobster strength for live export. Stay with us after the break. We hit the streets to gauge feedback on same-sex marriage. Welcome back. The legislation allowing same-sex marriage has moved a step closer to becoming law. The Marriage Amendment Bill passed through its committee stages, 77 votes to 43 in Parliament yesterday. Various amendments seeking to strengthen protections for celebrants and others not to have to perform same-sex marriage ceremonies against their will were defeated 22 to 88 through a conscience vote. The bill's back before the House for its third and final reading at an upcoming Members' Day. Conservatives and religious groups have spoken out against the proposed marriage amendment bill, while campaigners for marriage equality are reportedly thrilled with the support it's received to date. We hit the streets of traditionally conservative Invercargill to ask the locals for their thoughts on same-sex marriage. There's a bill before Parliament at the moment which would, could allow for same-sex marriages. What do you think about that? I think it should happen. I mean, everyone's entitled to their freedom and, you know, New Zealand's meant to be a free country, so why not? Um, no, I think that's fine. You know, I think that we just put too much um, debate on it all the time and, you know, too much emphasis. I think people should just be happy. No, I, um, last time I'd heard, and I'm not very uh, tuned in, but uh, is that, you know, the church hadn't really been consulted. Now, like, marriage in it itself is, was an invention of the church. It was a covenant designed by the church. So there should be some discussion there. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. There should be some discussion. That's fine. We differ. <laughs> I'm, I'm opposed to it. I think uh, marriage is between male and female, and uh, they're well provided for in the current Partnership Act, so they don't need to be called themselves husband and wife or whatever, or have that taken out of the legislation. So, yeah. But it's fine. You're quite keen for that? Yep. I don't agree with it. Why? Um, it doesn't make sense. Um, how can two people that have got, diff got the same shaped bodies um, really fit into the marriage bill? How can they have children? There's a bill before Parliament. If it goes through, it's going to enable same-sex partners to be married. What are your thoughts? I think that's fine. People should be allowed to, you know, live the way they want to live. They're not doing any harm. Um, I think that's great. I think it's love's love. And I don't think marriage is just between women and men. I think it's, yeah, it's love and love. It doesn't worry me. But I wouldn't be doing it. Simple as that. All for gay marriage, you know, same partner relationships. Yeah. I think the same thing. I think everyone should yeah. have the right to marry who they want to. Yeah. Great so. believers of love, so you know, whoever that might be. <laughs> you know, they should be able to celebrate celebrate that love as well, you know. So all good. For men I don't think it's hygienic. <laughs> but yeah, ladies aren't too bad. But uh, no, I don't really agree on it, but each to their own. I'm not against it, either, totally against it, but my personal opinion is I don't agree with it. Cycling through Invercargill on her way to Bluff today, 19-year-old Irene Le Fleming kept her auntie in mind who passed away from lung cancer last year. The South Cantabrian, who set off 19 days ago from Cape Brianga, has raised over $3,000 for lung cancer during her journey. Her biggest ride day was 142 kilometres. She suffered, suffered heat stroke in Waikato and had just one puncture. Staying with friends and relatives along the way, her fatigue-fighting diets consisted of carbohydrates and protein. Stopping in Invercargill this afternoon before the final leg of her journey, Irene told us the trip has been quicker than anticipated. Originally we thought it would take uh, about 25 days all up and 22 days of riding, but today we've made it um, 19 days, so it's been interesting <laughs> getting here that quick, but yeah. 
Workers could be guaranteed a Monday off when Anzac Day and Waitangi Day fall on a weekend if a new private member's bill is passed next month. Workers could see the benefits of proposed Mondayised hol public holidays as soon as 2015. All parties, excluding National, voted in favour of backing the law change at the committee stage yesterday. However, Prime Minister John Key said government felt the proposed change could undermine the special nature of a nationally important holiday. And on that note, we'll leave you to enjoy your Easter holiday break. Up next is sport with part two of our profile and Highlanders forward Joe Wheeler. Join us again next Wednesday for more news from around the region. Here are some of the highlights from the short week that was. Good night. Bad.